What is up everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Last episode we took down the second gym leader here in Chibi Sinnoh and that is of course Gardenia standing right here next to me. And today we're going to be checking out the latest and greatest feature in the Sinnoh remakes, the Grand Underground. I've been so excited to check this place out because there's so many Pokemon that you couldn't catch in the original games down here. And there might just be some that I want to add onto my team. But first things first, we gotta actually access the underground. And you can do that right here in Eterna at the underground man's house. Ready to dig down for some adventures. And if you guys are excited, make sure to smash that like button for some more brilliant diamond and pearl. I'm the first one to have started digging out the underground. I am, you can call me the underground man. I'll make a gift to you. Hold up your end of the deal and put it to good use. And we're gonna get the Explorer Kit, which is the key item needed to actually go down underground. I did a guide a couple days ago on all of the Pokemon you can find, but as part of the LP, there are a couple of Pokemon, as I said, that I want to try and get. So first, go to the underground. Simply use the Explorer Kit. Can't be used indoors or in a cave. Now give it a try. Well, I feel like if you try to dig right in front of this building, might not be great for, like, the structure. You know, you might put a sinkhole or... I don't know, it just doesn't seem very safe, but hey! Rourke! The heck are you doing down here? Welcome to Sinnoh's Underground! This is a network of tunnels, caves, and caverns lying beneath Sinnoh. Huh? What am I doing down here? That's kind of hard to answer. I mean, you can do pretty much anything you want down here. For instance, you can dig up fossils and treasure, or you can make your own secret base! You should talk to the underground man to learn more. We don't need that old man. I'll teach you everything you need to know. Underground Orange, reporting for duty. So, first things first, uh, there are the Pokemon hideaways, which are the question marks that you can see on the mini map up in the top left corner. And if we push the Y button, you can actually open that map up and see just how big the underground really is. But right now we can only access the area in green. Uh, all the stuff grayed out. If you want to get to those, you're going to have to dig down from like a different town or city. But uh, you might also notice the little golden dots on the minimap. And if we press the R button, you can actually see those shining on the wall right there. And that is going to be your digging spot. So let's go ahead and do our first. There's a note tucked inside the Explorer Kit. Digging for fossils. I put a sledgehammer and pickaxe in your Explorer Kit. Use them and you'll be able to dig out all sorts of stuff. Before the wall comes tumbling down, that is. Tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. That's a song, right? Oh my gosh, okay, we got real lucky that we can see both items immediately. Uh, so we're gonna switch to the tiny hammer, and that will only break one little tile at a time. So you'll see, uh, the gray means that there's still a brown layer underneath, so you're gonna have to hit it twice in order to get down to the very bottom. And those dark gray spots uh, that you might have noticed the first time we hit the wall, you can never break through. It's kind of like bedrock in Minecraft. But yeah, once you see a little item poking out, like this little blue square right here, I recommend using the sledgehammer, and you'll be able to clear out quite a lot of area around it. And boom! Everything has been dug up already! So it looks like the next digging spot is quite far away, but I guess that gives me a little bit more time to talk about the hideaways, which are the question marks you can see on the map, and you know what? I've changed my mind. Let's go check out the first one. And we've got a Fountain Spring Cave, which is perfect because this is actually where one of the Pokemon that I really want to get on my team is located. And again, I did a full video on all of the Pokemon that can spawn in those hideaways and mainly just the rare ones that you might want to grab for your team. And one of those is Togepi, which can actually be found here in the water biome or Fountain Spring Cave. There's a nice little licky tongue over there. Not exactly what I was looking for, but there's definitely a lot of rare Pokemon that can spawn. As I said, I'm looking for Togepi, so what you can do is just keep running in and out and uh, the Pokemon will respawn. So we'll keep doing that in just a little bit, but I want to dig some more first. I actually want to try to find a fossil in this episode too, so we can get ourselves a Cranidos, which is the version exclusive fossil for Brilliant Diamond. And if you're playing Shining Pearl, of course, you will get yourself a shield on instead. Murkrow's in the danger zone right now. We're even at like 14 health. Oh yeah, we're definitely running away from this licky tongue. Maybe Togepi's not quite ready to spawn yet because we haven't done the full tutorial with the underground man. So we should probably head 
back up and talk to him again. He'll give you probably the digger drill so you can set up your secret base. And here is the spacious cave where you can find a whole bunch of other Pokemon. So again, check out that underground guide if you want more clarification, but basically each area on the minimap, like depending on the color, is the type of biome. And here in the spacious cave, we've got Magnemite apparently. I feel like that's a pretty rare encounter, so might as well try to catch it here if we can, because that Licky Tongue earlier was pretty dang high level. And this dude is also a 27, what? Oh, we have one dust ball actually. I'm pretty sure this counts as a cave. It breaks out in one, not, not even a shake actually. It didn't shake at all. Magnemite just busted on out of there. Come on, this can't be that hard, right? Maybe we'll have better luck with just the regular old Pokeball. We got one shake at least. As far as I can remember my first experience in the underground, I barely caught a single dang thing because these catch rates are just insane. But hey, we got Magnemite on like the fifth try. <laughs> That's one down at least, which means there's hope for Togepi still. We just got to get it to actually spawn. But Magnemite's a pretty cool Pokemon too. Of course, it has a new evolution in Sinnoh, which is Magnezone. Well, it's not really new anymore in Gen 8, but like this was the first generation when it appeared. I think I'm actually going to head back up to the above. <laughs> I love how when we push that button, Boneri just freezes with the exclamation mark too. That just looks like a straight up glitch right now. Anyway, let's go back to the surface. Beam me up, shouty. Hello. This dude was really waiting for us the whole time. I see you've gone underground. Well done. Take these as a reward. And we got a Red Sphere S, which is the small variety. And a Blue Sphere and a Green Sphere too. There are apparently some Pokemon in the ground underground that you can't normally find around here. Meeting new Pokemon is a hundred times more fun when it's a rare one. Your road to being a Spelunker has barely begun. If you want to know more, just come visit me. I want to do that right now, actually. We might as well get all of the underground tutorials right off the bat, just done and dusted. Uh, so if we go back to this man, he's going to give us another task, I believe. How is the ground underground? Big and empty, I would think. But that's just because you're a novice. Novice? A noob, basically. Because there's many things hidden down there. For my next test, I want you to dig up some treasure. While underground, check the radar for spots of yellow. Go to such a location and yeah, I mean, we know how to dig for treasure, bro. We just did it. Now we can actually explore the underground online, which I haven't gotten to try since playing the games early. There was nobody down there, dude. It was just tumbleweeds. And you can also do it with a link code so you can play only with friends of yours, like on a Discord. But I want to play with randoms all over the world because I don't have any friends, as I said in episode one. But that would be fun to do on stream, actually, to set a link code and have like a little private lobby with just you guys. So. Uh, maybe once we get a little bit further in the... Oh my gosh, what the heck? Something good may happen. Yo, somebody unlocked all the diglets, Which is another thing we haven't quite seen yet. Uh, but that means that more rare statues can spawn from the little golden spots. Unfortunately, the golden spot is a little far away right now. And there's a time limit to how long this bonus lasts. So let's see if we can make it there fast enough. You can see a secret base that belongs to someone else over there. Okay, we made it to one... Uh, spot at least and the effect is still going so let's dig and hopefully we can find some nice statues this time Boom, there's one already you can see it in the corner and it's actually gonna be a rare statue too Which is really good for our very first one. You know what sledgehammer and boom I believe that is a bug type statue from uh, the little symbol right there. I'm really not finding nothing. Oh finally No, what when I Found the freaking spear. The thing was, uh, it was too late, basically. And the underground collapses, but at least we get a Heracross statue with the shiny symbol on it, too. So those jade statues, or shiny statues, whatever you want to call them, I call them jade because that's kind of like the color that they're giving, uh, will actually increase the spawns by just a little bit more when you place those in your secret base. So because it's a Heracross, that means that more bug Pokemon could potentially spawn in the hideaways. But you actually have to place it in your secret base first, which we haven't even set up our secret base yet. So, you know, we'll have to wait for that. Uh, but let's do another dig. Take advantage of the fact that 
there's still 40 Diglets up and running. Oh, I just realized uh, there was another statue poking out. But we did get another gorgeous stone box, which means we're going to get another shiny statue of Mawile, which I believe will count for Steel and Fairy type Pokemon. And yo, how come the effect is still running? Is it because we're online? I'm guessing the Diglets that you collect, like all players can contribute to that total. That's definitely a lot easier than when I was playing on local mode, as in offline by myself. You gotta actually collect all those Diglets alone and it's uh, not fun. Takes forever. So uh, online so far, definitely having a big plus. And boom, another statue. Let's just sledgehammer this thing a couple times. Uh, looks like we've got a nor- Looks like the normal type symbol to me. Oh, you heard that? Time's up. The Diglett effect has run out. But we managed to get three gorgeous boxes, which is kind of crazy for our first time down here. Now we've got Girafferig. And yeah, now you'll see that number is back down to zero out of 40. So the effects of the Digletting are over. And the way you get that back up to 40 is by collecting Diglets that randomly pop up as you're like exploring, just running around the different corridors. We'll probably run into one eventually. I'm kind of surprised that we haven't seen one yet. All the way down the tunnel, man, and still no Diglets. What the heck? All right, well, let's check out this hideaway. And we've got another spacious cave, which is maybe like my least favorite, just because all the Pokemon inside are kind of generic. I don't know if the Pokemon spawns themselves are any different, like in the hideaways when you get the 40 Diglets. Maybe one of you can let me know in the comments, because I'm honestly not sure. But, <gasps> no way! Yo, we actually found the fossil on our, like, first expedition? Okay, we've... It's not our first expedition anymore. We've been down here and done digs, like, ten times already. But still, I do not remember finding the fossil this early in my first playthrough. And we've also got a statue, which you'll notice is gold this time. Even though gold, I feel, should be more rare than the silver from earlier, that ain't how it works down here. A pretty stone box, which is going to shine and reveal... A Torterra! Okay! It's not quite as rare as the green statues, of course, but... Torterra, still, like, that's pretty cool. Got the final evolution of Bonsai to add into our secret base. But in order to actually make a secret base, you first need to get a digger drill which is an item we don't have right now. I'm not giving up on this Togepi yet, dude. I know it's down here. 2,000 years later. <gasps> Yo, no way. It's actually down here. Oh my God, dude. I was so ready to give up. It's legitimately been like an hour of me looking for this thing and it actually exists. Like I thought it was a mythical creature at this point, but Togepi is indeed down in whatever this hideaway, the water cave. Oh my god, dude, I'm like, I can't believe that it's actually in front of me right now. But we actually have to catch it, which might be more difficult than uh, even encountering it. So let's just toss our first ball and see if it even shakes or anything. Or maybe it might just catch on the... Come on, dude, really? You gotta tease me like that, Togepi, bro? Why you do this? Why you why why you why you, why you gotta be like this? The metronome, the luck of the draw. What could it get? Crush grip. I don't even know what that does, honestly. Uh, I guess it just summons Master Hand to give Bonsai a little pet. But yeah, I'm gonna bring out Major C and just go for the sing. Make our chances of catching this thing as high as possible, because I do not want to risk losing it after all this time. And you're really going for yawn. Okay, well, we really got to hit this thing now on the first try. Come on, yeah! That's what I like to see. Go to sleep, little beach. We also have two great balls, just two though. So if this one don't work, then I don't know what will, but it looks like it will. So we no longer have to worry. Togepi is ours. Holy moly, that took way too long, homies. Like, I, I don't even know what to say. I like my brain, it's just not working. I feel loopy. I feel like, uh, what? Who's learning bite? I feel like everyone got a level up from how 
tough that whole ordeal was. But now we got the most toughest ordeal of all. What will we nickname this little egg? I'm gonna go with Benedict after my favorite type of eggs. <laughs> it also kind of looks like a poached egg when it becomes a Togekiss. And I guess uh, Major C. No wait, Toko, right? Oh my gosh, I don't even know who to replace at this point. We got three flying types on the team, or well, Togepi will become one eventually. And again, no Pokedex entry, which uh, Bidoof, get away from me, bro. I gotta check one thing though. Does Benedict have the right ability? I swear, dude, if after all that, we've got Serene Grace, yes, it's perfect. The nature might not be great, but now that we've got our scrambled egg and did a whole bunch of stuff in the underground, it's time to move on with the story and head up north to see a familiar face. It's Champion Cynthia in all her chibi glory. Oh, is that a Pokedex? You must be helping Professor Rowan. How did she even see our Pokedex? Did we just walk around flaunting it? What's your name? Okay, hello Orange. I'll be sure to remember that name. Mine is Cynthia, and I'm a trainer just like you. I've been studying Pokemon mythology lately, just out of curiosity. Here in Eterna City, there is a statue of an ancient Pokemon. According to myth, it was an extremely powerful Pokemon. Who knows, you may encounter something like it while you're traveling with your Pokedex. Try using these, they should help you on your way. And she's gonna give us TM93s, which I believe should be cut and will help us get rid of those trees right behind our big ol' head. Yeah, cut is now in the Hidden Moves app as well. Remember, you can use Cut from your Poketch in the field. It'll let you go to places that were previously unaccessible. That's important for filling up your Pokedex, right? Then luck be with you, young trainer! Oh, I so wish I had talked to Cynthia before going down to the underground. We probably would have gotten more luck in catching Togekiss or just encountering it was really the tough part. But yeah, now we can uh, cut down these trees and explore this very ominous building which I wanted to read the sign for, but I guess it's too late now. I think it should be pretty obvious what's going on here, judging by <laughs> the cosplayers we've got inside. Team Galactic ain't interested in this world. Our gaze is beyond the stars. That's certainly ambitious. What are you guys, like SpaceX now? I thought y'all were just like fan fiction writers, hoping to make the next big sci-fi hit. Anyway, uh, I guess I'm gonna keep training Bonsai or maybe Zip. I feel has been falling behind a bit. And Benedict, the Togepi's at level 29, so I'm not really sure if we should even have it on the team because it's a little bit too high compared to everybody else. But at the same time, Togepi does evolve by having high happiness. In order to get happiness on it, we're gonna need a lot of level ups and just a lot of battles. So the longer we spend with Togepi, the better. But then again, if it doesn't gain any levels, it's not gonna gain any happiness either. And these grunts are not exactly giving us the most experience, so maybe Benedict is a little bit too early to have on the team just yet. I just don't wanna admit it, cause I spent so long finding it that it just, uh, I don't wanna imagine us not actually using it. Oh, uh, you actually wanna battle. Okay, I thought y'all were just browsing Reddit or something. Maybe checking out the latest upload from El Muncho. I joke, but it was actually confirmed that YouTube exists in the world of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Or at least some kind of variant of YouTube, like a video sharing website. And oh my gosh, we got another Redditor ready to battle. Now if these grunts actually had any kind of interesting Pokemon, I would actually show the battles off. But all they've got so far are Wurmples and Cascoons and you know, those kind of weak ass pokey so we're definitely skipping over most of these uh conducting research on new forms of energy want to harness the power of pokemon i feel like a couple of pokemon i can think of would have pretty much unlimited energy like isn't slugma's pokedex entry talk about how it's hotter than the sun you can just stuff that in a battery or use it as a battery and power pretty much a whole house I mean, more than a house, you can power a whole planet if it has the energy of the sun. Which reminds me of this super cute animation I saw on the Poketoons YouTube channel, where there's like a little house and a slugma powers it all. It's like the source of energy for the chimney. And actually like the whole house basically is heated by the little slugma. It's really cute. You guys should definitely check it out. 
If you haven't, I will link it in the description if I can remember. Because it might not be too easy to find since it's only in Japanese. Uh, but there's at least subtitles, which is nice of them. I don't think they've released it in English, at least as far as I know. But finally, we got someone switching things up a little bit here with a Kadabra, Mr. Scientist. The real backbone of Team Galactic. And of any Pokemon Evil Team, really. I feel that without the Scientist, they wouldn't be able to get much accomplished. You could say that about a lot of things, but like, realistically, it's not like the grunts are helping at all. You need the manpower, I suppose, but seriously, like without the scientists, what would any evil Pokemon team do? They're the real MVPs of the operation. Team Rocket would have never had Mewtwo. Team Galactic here wouldn't be able to do anything, really. Like even the admins, what the heck is this girl doing? Might be able to open up a hair salon, I suppose. What is going on here though? Just <laughs> don't mind if I come in between you guys. What is it with Team Galactic? Why did they take our Pokemon? What are they trying to accomplish? Oh, that's it? Why the camera angle change if you're not gonna say anything? This is the real person we need to talk to here. Eh? Did you want something? How silly of me to even ask. You wanna free the Pokemon? Yeah, like that's gonna happen. Wow. Person of uh, short words, or few words. Not much of a talker, I suppose. We've got Commander Jupiter. And dang, dude, she got the Shigo outfit going on. I like it. With the leg exposed, I feel that's a little risky for Pokemon. <laughs> I would not have been surprised if they actually switched up her design for the remakes, but considering these are more faithful, you know, all the characters kind of kept their traditional look. A little bit sad, honestly. I loved seeing how they remade Maxi and Archie back in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. They had like a totally different fit and even kind of more of a theme or like they embraced their whole theme more. How insolent. Take a bite of this, child. I could literally take a bite of it considering we have the move bite, but Skuntank is a dark type. So bite wouldn't really do all that much, uh, but neither is Spark really. You've got Flamethrower, which is pretty interesting. I might have or could have gone for a charge and then maybe Spark would have just one shot it, but I never like using charge. Now I'm kind of regretting it though, because you got a Citrus Berry and maybe Spark with the charge would have one shot it since uh, charge, I think powers up the next electric move that you use. And now Zip uh, is actually in a little bit of risk of dying. So maybe I should switch things up here and bring out Vega instead. Again, missed out on an opportunity to use Pluck on it, because it definitely had that berry, and so did Commander Mars's Per Ugly. So wait, if Jupiter has Skuntank and Mars had Per Ugly, what the heck is Saturn? That's the last guy, right? What is his Pokemon? I'm trying to think of it, I really can't remember, because like, Glammeow and Stunky are version exclusives. There's not like a third Pokemon in the mix. I honestly can't remember. He might just have both of them. Oh wait, is it Toxicroak actually? I feel like he had a Toxicroak. Oh no, the aftermath, what? That sucks. Poor Vega is gonna go down. I lost track of how many times we fainted now. Down in the underground, I definitely lost count. So maybe we can just not consider those as part of the whole little challenge I'm going for here, having the least deaths that we can. But yeah, the Vega death right there definitely does count. Well, aren't you tough? It's okay though. Our official Pokemon statue investigation is finished, and Mars has collected energy from the Windworks. We're pretty much finished here. I'll let you in on one little secret. Our boss is researching the myths of ancient Pokemon. With the power of mythical Pokemon, we'll become the rulers of Sinnoh! I suggest you keep out of Team Galactic's affairs from now on. This is your last warning. Ooh, how threatening. I got my Clefairy back and it's all thanks to you. They said Clefairy came from space, hand it over. Their logic baffles me still. It's like they're from space. Anyway, they're gone now. Thank you very much. I can't thank you enough, but cruise by my cycle shop, okay? Oh, so that's who that man was. How convenient, like both of the people that we've rescued so far from Team Galactic happen to be nice local business owners and the music switch up. That's kind of weird. What even is this building actually? 
Like, what do they use this for when Team Galactic isn't here? Is Team Galactic a legitimate space company, like NASA or something? I guess I'll read that sign in a little bit and uh, check. But I'm pretty sure there's an item that's got to be somewhere around here. What the heck? Sure wish we had the item finder already. Maybe around this side? Oh yeah, there's a cut tree, so let's get rid of that. And uh, I really hope it leads to something, because I feel like this is a lot of hassle for nothing. Boom! It's TM46! For beep. I still feel like there would probably be a hidden item somewhere around here, but maybe I'm misremembering. Anyway, let's uh, summon Bat Doof or not. He just cuts him now. But yeah, this is the Team Galactic building, and they want your Pokemon. <laughs> Way to make it low key, guys. You made it real obvious about your sneaky ways there. Uh, but yeah, now that we've rescued the bike shop owner, we can actually get ourselves a handy dandy bike from Rad Rickshaw. Get on and ride. And we're going to do just that so we can maneuver around Sinnoh a little quicker. But also because you actually need one in order to move on to the next city. Uh, we're going to be going through the cycling roads. So yeah, we need Mr. Rickshaw. Thanks for rescuing me. I can't thank you enough. Say, let me get you a bike to show my gratitude. Please come with me for a moment. Oh, trying to step outside. That's usually what people say when they want to fight, right? I don't think this man's trying to fight though, he's just trying to ride! Now choose a color, which one will it be? Blue, red, yellow, or green? Hmm... I mean, I like the sound of green. Yo! Okay, we styling with the bike outfit. Do we want green? Uh, I'm not too sure now. It's a little bit too puke colored for my liking. How about a nice yellow? Eh, I mean, it's definitely better, but I'm still not sure. I kind of want to match with the... Okay, well, I picked the wrong color, but our helmet and everything is red. So maybe we go with red? Pretty sure that was like the default color back in the original game. So let's go full nostalgic. Red, the color of passion. It calls to mind images of the flame on Charmander's tail. Perfect for me. Yep. I do like me some Charmander and fire types in general. It's the latest model, so I'll read the operating manual. Press the B to shift gears. In third gear, the bike can't reach full speed, but it'll be easier to handle. In fourth gear, it can ride at full speed. Your bike can take you through all sorts of towns, roads, and routes. Now get out there and ride. Yeah. Oh my God. Normally I cut my bursts out, but that one was so weirdly timed that I kind of <laughs> want to keep it in now. But yeah, we got the bike and uh, this is the third gear, as he mentioned. I really like that little noise that it makes. It's so nostalgic. Not just of the Sinnoh games, but like riding a bike as a kid in real life. Oh wow, you can now ride down Cycling Road and end up in Heart Home. It's a fast and fun ride, check it out! But what if I want to check out what's on this route? What the frick, are you kidding me? I can't go down that way anymore? Why? I literally tried to go down there earlier. That's where all my honey trees were at, dude. Come on! Okay, well, hopefully they let us go back that way after visiting Cycling Road, because I want to go back and check on my honey trees, and wait a minute. Who the frick are you? Long time no see, dude! You look puzzled. You're wondering who I am? I'm Professor Rowan's assistant and Don's father? Must be nice to have a dad. I've come a long way at the behest of the professor. Let me ask you, how many Pokemon? Uh, 45? Wonderful, bravo! Here's something for ya. A piece of candy. My mom taught me better than to eat candies from strangers, but at least I can feed them to my Pokemon. That's totally fine. So in the original games, this is where you would get the EXP share, but since now the EXP is shared among all, I guess we get candy instead. Thank you, Don's father. Now on to the cycling road, which I don't think we're actually going to take on fully in this episode, but I hope that now that we visited it and talked to Don's dad, who's now gone from the gate. You know what, let's switch up the gear and ride like the wind to see if that kid will now let us past. Are you freaking serious, bro? Why? I really can't check on my honey trees? I should have done it earlier because he wasn't being a little weirdo blocking the way. This bike is a little too fast, actually. I mean, we can switch the gears, but it's kind of hard to like land on a specific tile. And there is actually a tile behind this statue 
that has a Draco plate. The first of the many plates of Arceus, with text engraved on the back saying, When the universe was created, its shards became this plate. The shards of the universe itself? What? They say this is a Pokemon that lived long ago. Really? Don't really recognize it. Like in the original games, this statue clearly resembled both Pokemon in the pixel art, but now I feel it only looks like Dialga to me. Maybe it's because I'm playing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. It'd be kind of weird if they made it just Dialga, but then again, uh, the text seems to just say Dialga, so in laughter or tears, the same time flows, such is the blessing of Dio! It's barely legible and completely faded, okay. Actually, one last building to check out in Eterna that's pretty worthwhile is this little shop right here. It's the herb shop. Ineffective or inexpensive, but effective medicine. I'm all about them alternative medicines, you know? Um, yeah, you can buy weed. I'm not even kidding, dude. This is basically Pokemon weed right here. Look, it revives with full HP and it's way cheaper than a max revive would be. Plus, they got super potions for 800. That's a steal, bro. So I'm gonna grab quite a couple of these roots. What is that one thing called? Jerba Mate? It's like a medicinal thing that uh, apparently gives you energy. Just hope they don't have any side effects. And over this way, uh, we've got another Eterna sign, but more importantly, Route 211, where uh, I guess we can move along to Heart Home or wait? This is the way to Veilstone, isn't it? I don't even actually want to fight this hiker. I just want to call it an episode, but I guess it's a little too late now. We're taking on Lewis, and don't tell me you've got a Geodude. Of course you do. Wait, doesn't this actually lead to Celestic Town? So I feel like they're going to block us at some point. Like, we're not going to be able to progress. But uh, right now, there's just rock we can smash. And yep, there it is. A big boulder that we can't quite push aside without the HM for strength. So we're going to have to come back to that cave a little bit later in our adventure. For now though, uh, there is one more trainer down this way that we can face. And I believe it's a bird keeper. Good thing we've got Zip leading the charge. No pun intended, because it literally does have a move called charge. <laughs> but I mean like it's actually in the front of the party. Yeah, that was totally intentional. The pun, I mean. Now charge him up with the spark. Oh, what the heck? You only had one Pokemon? I'm gonna peck you for the- oh my god, what? Uh, I'm not really into that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm all for trying new things, but, uh, quit taunting me. Eh? Get it? Because, uh, that's the TM that we just got there. And on this route, we can find a Meditite. Not that I want to catch one, just, uh, figured I'd show off some of the Pokemon you can find here. Because I think you can also find Bronzor. Though that might just be in Pokemon Platinum. One thing is for sure though, you can also find a little ninja boy. I thought it was a hidden item, but it was actually a hidden boy. You gotta pay the troll toll if you wanna get in the boy's soul. Had to emphasize soul there. I don't want you guys to get confused. Seems we just can't end off an episode without having some kind of innuendo. Although this one I can't claim as my own. That's a Danny DeVito original. Now let's finally move on to the cycling road because this little turd won't let me go back to my honey trees. As much as I want to go check if we got a Burmy, I guess we've got no other choice but to continue on our adventure. And they don't even make you get on the bike. Okay, I mean, obviously now we're on the bike, but usually if you don't get on it before going through that gate. Whoa, okay, we're just zipping on through. <laughs> on the cycling road, you automatically run all the way down, like without touching your controller, the bike will just keep on going down the slope. Cause that's like the implication is that you're on a hill going, well, downhill. <laughs> so you can't really stop yourself all that easily. And you might notice I've actually got Toko back on the team. So after Staravia unfortunately fainted back against the Galactic Commander, even though this isn't like an official Nuzlocke or anything, I don't know, I kind of feel like uh, we're going to do an unofficial Nuzlocke and try not to let any Pokemon die. So even though 
I might bring back Staravia in the future. I did notice a couple of comments saying that I should use Toko the Murkrow, and it is one of my favorite flying Pokemon because it is flying and dark type, and I love me some dark types. Uh, but originally, I was hesitant on actually using it because I thought you couldn't get the Dust Stone until pretty late into the game. But it turns out we can get one not that late, actually, at the Galactic Building. Not the one that we took on earlier in this episode, but uh, the one in Veilstone, which is like, I think around the 6th gym, or after beating the 6th gym, you do the whole big galactic event with the legendaries and everything. And uh, we're gonna try to take on every one of these cyclers here. Is that what they're called? That doesn't sound right. Oh, it's Cyclist, of course. <laughs> Cyclist Axel here, which uh, might be a pun as well. Axel, isn't that like a part of a wheel? Also a Kingdom Hearts character, and surprisingly a pretty common name in Puerto Rico. I think I know like three Axels, no joke. There was like two dudes in high school named Axel, and then there's another guy I know who's also Puerto Rican named Axel. I don't know what's up with it. Maybe parents grew up uh, in Puerto Rico playing a lot of Kingdom Hearts, but considering they're like my same age, that makes absolutely no sense. I, I don't know where they could have gotten the name from. I feel like it's not that common, but anyway, these cyclists aren't all that crazy. They do have a pretty good variety of Pokemon though. Well, as I say that, we've got another Ponyta, which we fought earlier. But you might notice I got Toots out here for the first time, that we've actually used it in a battle, and it can't even one-shot a little Ponyta. But that's okay, Toots. You gain experience. Not like literally experience, but uh, it's your only your first battle, so I should cut you a little bit of slack. At least you didn't take any damage, unlike Staravia. <laughs> I'm not even trying to roast Staravia or Vega right now, I just... I don't know, dude. I definitely do like Murkrow better though, so I'm glad we've got that on the team. And your bike can shift gears, huh? Let's see if you can ride it properly. I can ride my bike with no handlebars. No... another Starly, bro? Really? Kind of making me miss Vega a little, but... No, I can't go back now, okay? It's too late. We're committed to Murkrow. That bike can only take you as far as your energy will allow. Well, it's a good thing it's powered by Rotom. Not really. This isn't quite the Rotom bike, but I noticed that when you change gears, it does do a little electric sound, so... Let me try to show that off, actually. Ah, there it is. Got a little bit of electricity every time you shift to the fourth gear. But you don't need no gears in this cycling road. In fact, I'm hands-free right now. I let go of the controller and just ride on right down into the next cyclist here. We've got Rachel. Looking fit. I like it. I don't like the Shinx though. Thing is giving me some weird looks, so I must take it down. Well, let's see what else you've got. After our experience, of course. Which, uh, speaking of, Benedict has barely gained any. And I know it's because it's super high level compared to the rest of the team, so I'm actually thinking maybe we leave Benny on the bench. And by Benny, I'm of course talking about Benedict, our Togepi, our newest team member that we just got after like hours of grinding. And uh, again, I don't want to replace it or bench it because it took so long to get it, but realistically, we're not going to get Togetic anytime soon because, as I mentioned, you get friendship by leveling up. And there's a couple of other ways to gain friendship, actually, but we're not getting any of those right now. So Togepi really doesn't have to be on the team, technically, until later on when the rest of our team is around level 30. Let me know what you guys think, though, about our team right now. I mean, I definitely want to use a Togekiss, but I'm just saying that maybe I can wait until a little bit later in the playthrough to really add it in. And uh, just notice this girl actually has a Pikachu, which I don't know if we've seen before in the playthrough, but what the heck are you doing? Wagging that? That's inappropriate! Oh my god, the Electro Ball! But somehow Murkrow just tanks it up. What the heck, Toko? Why are you so strong, my guy? I mean, despite how strong you are, I don't think we can really match up that well against this uh, little Chew. So we're going to swap you out, especially because of that paralysis. Made it real annoying. 
and instead we'll bring out Bonsai just to get paralyzed as well. Are you freaking kidding me, dude? Uh, what? You're dozing off right now? Did the Pikachu use Yawn or am I missing something here? I think that might actually be a sign of the friendship. And of course, we're fully paralyzed again. Come on, we just need to hit one more Razor Leaf and this battle would be over. And the episode would probably be over. But of course, on the very last battle of the Cycling Road, they can't make things easy for us. Finally, though, we hit that Pikachu and uh, call it a wrap. But yeah, I think uh, that little message that popped up about Bonsai dozing off is a sign that it's getting a little bit friendlier with us. And uh, apparently so is Luxio learning the roar, which I don't normally really care about, but uh, why not? I mean, it's a lion. You gotta let the lion roar. As Toko also gains a level and also learns a new move, and my voice is kind of dying out right now, if you can't tell. Uh, so that's pretty much a sign that we gotta wrap up this episode soon here. But first, let's grab that Nightshade and... A little bit of extra cash from Kayla. <laughs> Why do all the female cyclists look like they're strangling something after they get beaten? Trying to strangle your invisible husband? Uh, well, this is kind of awkward. And out of the cycling road! You have a great bike, so I'd like to give you these great stickers! Hey, I love talking to random people that actually give us useful things. Most of the time, they don't give us nothing, but that girl thankfully did. And now we've made it to Route 207, where we're going to end off the episode by talking to Dawn. How's your Pokedex coming along? Me? I'm somewhere between fantastic and, uh, hopeless? But this isn't about me. I've got something nice for you! Orange, choose which hand you want to choose, right or left? Actually, I have a question for you viewers. Are you guys all right? Because I'm all left. Oh, I chose right on accident. I see you want the Versus Seeker. I'm impressed. You know what's important. Money, experience, battling. I know my priorities. Using that Versus Seeker, you can find trainers who want to rematch with you. Oh. Do you also have a Poketch? Yep, you do, so you can have this too. You deserve it for all your hard work, Orange. And we're gonna get the Dowsing Machine. Finally, we can find all the hidden items. It's something you should touch often. Oh, that's kinda weird. It'll especially be useful in dark caves. Okay, keep working on your Pokedexes. Professor Rowan is counting on us. And she's gone, like the wind. But yeah, that dowsing machine is pretty awesome, and I'm sure that there has to be a hidden item somewhere around here for us to test out this new feature. If I can find it. Aha! So yeah, you just tap on the little screen here. Actually, it's quite a big screen. Uh, oh, there we go. There's something down this way, it seems. So uh, it'll actually stay up in the top right corner, but what? The circle goes away? That's kind of annoying, dude. What? And now we're past it? I wish it would just stay on the screen so I know exactly where it is, but obviously in the original games on the DS, this was just on the bottom screen, so it was way easier to use. And I guess the hidden item is actually right in that little tile below, so we gotta slide down the mud and not run into any wild Pokemon! I knew I was being too hopeful, but yeah, the dowsing machine in this game is definitely more annoying to use because you actually have to load up the Poketch and it doesn't stay... Oh wait, now it is pinging forever. What the heck? Is it because we're closer to the item? Well, the point is there's a Pokeball. And yeah, it's it's marked with a little dot on the Dowsing Machine map and... Really? I wish there was a button where we could just ping it without having to like actually open it and then tap. Like, it could just ping in the middle with the push of like L or something because I don't think the L button's mapped to anything. And I've just realized I never mapped my bike. Let's do that real quick. Just hit register and boom, got the bike up in there. Now we can whip it out and up the mudslide or not. Got to charge it up and woo, there we go. Got another honey tree. Yeah, let's go ahead and slather that one since I probably lost all the ones in the route before. And we'll come back and check on it in the next episode because that is it for today. Thank you all so much for watching and next time we will head on to Heart Home City and maybe even make it to Veilstone for the next gym. Smash that like button if you enjoyed and I will catch you all then.